On today's show, we've got a sneak peek at the latest epic coming out of the new age of DC heroes, The Terrifics. Plus, we're getting all the details on the crazy mid-season premiere of Gotham, so get ready for DC All Access. Hey guys, I'm Rahul Kohli. And I'm Winnie Moore. We broke into the House of Secrets and found all the latest DC news you need to know. The Bat Family is at a crossroads after a major betrayal by one of their own in Detective Comics. Spoilers for Detective Comics, but Batwoman went rogue in murdering Clayface and now Batman calls on his most trusted allies to decide whether she is deserving of the Bat symbol on her chest. This is a huge turning point for the Gotham verse, so make sure you check out Detective Comics 975 this week. For the first time ever, Mira is getting her own solo adventure in Mira, Queen of Atlantis. The HBIC of the Seven Seas maintains peace with the surface world as an Atlantean civil war rages, but Ocean Master's return to Atlantis will light a fire in Mira like you've never seen. This story proves that the Queen of Atlantis is nobody's sidekick, so pick up issue number one starting today. Batman Sins of the Father is a new series that bridges the gap between Telltale's two video games starring the world's greatest detective. Deadshot is on a killing spree with former employees of Arkham Asylum in his crosshairs, and it's up to Bruce to halt the body count and find out who is behind Deadshot's mission. You can check out Chapter 2 of Batman Sins of the Father digitally starting today. The Milk Wars event from DC's Young Animal reaches its insane finale in the Doom Patrol JLA special. Through four previous installments, Milk Wars has infected the DC Universe with Young Animal's signature weirdness. In the final chapter, the Young Animal teams will join DC's greatest heroes and unlock a power that has never been seen anywhere in the multiverse. This issue sets the stage for the future of Young Animal, so grab a copy of the Doom Patrol JLA special today. I hope you guys enjoyed the season premiere of iZombie, and if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you catch up before an all-new episode airs on Monday. Episode 2 picks up right where the premiere left off, with Seattle walled off from the rest of the country. Some people want in because the zombie virus offers a cure for their sickness, and others want out because they'd rather not become dinner for the undead. Plus, now that Ravi's a zombie, you can catch me eating loads of disgusting brains. Check out episode two of iZombie this Monday, right after Legends on the CW. Today is your last chance to sign up for the Green Lantern box from Funko's Legion of Collectors. Each box comes loaded with Funko figures, shirts, comics, and tons of other swag that you can't get anywhere else. So enlist in the Lantern Corps and sign up to receive your shipment right now at legionofcollectors.com. The Terrifics is one of the most anticipated titles from the new age of DC heroes, and it unites DC's latest super team on a wild intergalactic adventure. We've got all-star writer Jeff Lemire here to fill us in on his new hit series. Where did the idea for The Terrifics come from, and how did you get involved? Um, I'd, I had been speaking to uh, Dan DiDio about possible new DC projects for a few weeks. Um, and I'm, I've always sort of been drawn to a lot of the more obscure DC characters. I find more pathos in them, and I love all the old kind of crazy Silver Age science fiction elements of the DC universe. So Dan and I were just sort of tossing ideas back and forth, and I think I suggested Metamorpho as a character that I could see doing something very poignant with that. Um, and Dan's response was, he also loved Metamorpho, but Metamorpho really only succeeds in a team setting. So that got us kind of on the tangent of Metamorpho in a team. And he said something along the lines, oh, you could have Plastic Man too. And then I was kind of hooked. I'm like, oh, this is, you know, a team of oddballs is up. You know, that's always fun. So we just started riffing off that. And I don't know how he came into Mr. Terrific joining the team, but somehow he got into it and then it all started to click together uh, around that. So. How does this series spin out of Dark Knight's Metal? Yeah, so uh, in Metal, uh, Plastic Man and Mr. Terrific are both sort of involved in Metal in, in different ways. So this series kind of picks up near the, I guess, right after Metal. While Mr. Terrific's been away on his many adventures, a lot of his technology from Terrific Tech has been obtained legally through Stag Industries, which is which is the company that uh, Metamorpho has always been linked to. Simon has stolen some of Terrific's tech and. Part of that was some of Terrific's early attempts to contact or, or explore the Dark Multiverse. So Metamorpho gets uh, quite literally sucked into the Dark Multiverse because of Stag's experiments. And Mr. Terrific swoops in and tries to fix things as, as he likes to do. He's sort of a fixer, you know. And kind of like a, a set of dominoes, the team quickly forms through this sort of inc this inciting incident. Tell us more about Phantom Girl. How did she survive for so long all alone? 
Yeah, I don't want to spoil too much about her because she's sort of a new character, and, and her story is kind of uh, it's sort of revealed throughout the ish, the first couple of issues, and it's sort of fun. But obviously, she's from an alien planet, and she has the ability to become phantom-like, ghost-like, and because of that, she can survive the dark multiverse. But also, the dark multiverse is a strange place, and time runs differently there. So she feels like she's only been there for a few years, but she's actually been there for you know quite a long time and she becomes kind of the missing component of the team in a lot of ways she becomes the heart of the team everyone's asking about fandom girl's connection to the legion because obviously i'm a big legion fan and there was a fandom girl in legion of superheroes and there is a connection uh, i don't want to spoil it but i will say it's not the same character that readers are familiar with from the legion it's not that fandom girl but she is connected to that fandom girl and the, that connection will be made very clear within the first two or three issues what are some of the obstacles the Terrifics will have to overcome? Uh, the Terrifics will be facing uh, a number of obstacles, obviously. I I've tried to structure the series so that each story, lies, uh, each story arc is, is pretty small and contained, but they all kind of build to tell an overall story. So among the, the threats or obstacles they'll face in the first sort of six, seven issues are an ancient elemental man that's from Metamorpho's past, a gang of space pirates, and then there's a the bigger villain of the whole piece is someone called Dr. Dredd, who was actually an old Silver Age metamorpho character that we've kind of reimagined and modernized. He's kind of the underlying villain of the whole series, so he's, he's the big one. The Terrifics issue number one is on shelves today, and here's a list of all the DC titles you can pick up this week. week and there is plenty of crazy in the spring premiere from a brand new Poison Ivy to some dangerous partnerships forming within the walls of Arkham Asylum. We've got executive producers Danny Cannon and John Stevens here to share what's brewing in the second half of season four. We come back with episode 12 um, in a different fashion. We found a way to create an event that all of our characters experience by being in close proximity to it. That event brings a character that we love back to life. And so she will be making an appearance there. Basically in this episode, all of our characters will have to deal with each other, whether they want to or not. Jerome has a plan for Gotham. And so he wants to get out into Gotham and make the asylum that is Arkham Asylum be reflected in Gotham as a whole. He can't do it by himself, so he has to put together his own legion of horribles which includes Penguin as his right hand, and then all of these other characters who we know from the rogues gallery. Scarecrow and Jervis Tetch, who's gonna come back as well. Firefly, Freeze. They sit around a table, much like this one, where Jerome can sit at the head of it, and we have his band of, you know, terrible people. The great thing about having an Arkham Asylum and all the people that Jim Gordon has put into that place is that once they get out, Gotham is gonna be held to ransom. There's only one leader for that League of Horribles, and that's Jerome. We will see a conclusion to that character, or is it a new beginning? We are gonna have so much fun together. <laughs> Ivy, for me, has always been somebody that was growing. You know, that's, it's not just the, the imagery of having vines and, and plants around that person. It was the idea of, like, she is Mother Nature. She is of the Earth. So not only is her body changing, her mind is changing. So an ivy that comes out this time, there's less innocence, there's less doubt. There is a drive and an intent to punish all of those who've wronged her and who are destroying the city is in her eyes. She works really well as sort of like the perfect test subject for what all the characters are going through because the theme running through all of the show is one of creation of identity and transformation. You watch Bruce Wayne slowly becoming Batman, Selena Kyle slowly becoming Catwoman, and they all get to do that over the course of years and you watch that. So thematically it serves as a nice reflection and intensification of what everybody else is doing. This second half of the season is much more about going back to those people that we love and building towards a cataclysmic event that uh, will change everybody's life forever. Alive! It's alive! The panel of the week is alive! 
that's it for this episode, but remember that you still have time to enter to win the Batman Black and White Spy vs. Spy statue, Mad Magazine 550, and the first two issues of Damage. For your chance to win, visit dccomics.com slash watch and win and fill out the form with your information. It's so easy, even your roommate who ate a wax pear for breakfast could do it. And he's an idiot. Good luck and we'll see you tomorrow.